Father, it is because of your mercy and your grace that we confidently approach you this morning, giving you praise, honor, and glory for your goodness, for your blessings, Father, for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you for how you have kept us during these troubling times. We thank you for our life, our health, and our strength. We thank you for your promises that we can stand on. We thank you, Father God, that you have saved us. We thank you for keeping us. And now, Father God, on this seventh day of the 21-day fast of supernatural success, we know that everything that you have promised will come to pass. I only pray, Father, that we will be patient, not get ahead of you, wait for your leading, wait for your guiding. I pray that we will not obstruct the things that you desire to do through and in our lives. Father God, let your mercy and your grace and your power continually fall upon us. Yes. Bless us, Father God. Let your perfect will be done in every area of our life. I pray that we will be a light in this dark world. I pray that you will use us like you've never used us before. I pray that you'll bless this service on this morning. Bless the man of God. Bless the word of God. Bless the praises and the worship that will go up before you, Lord. Father God, we will magnify you all day every day for the rest of our days father god bless us keep us cover us and let your perfect will be done and we will yet praise you for all that you've said all that you've done all that you've promised all that we see all that we desire all that we dream will come to pass according to your riches of glory we thank you father we magnify your name for you are the only true and living god and we are blessed and privileged to be known as one of yours. On this morning, I'm going to read in your hearing from Psalms 91. And I say to everyone, praise the Lord, saints. We give God praise, honor, and glory for his goodness and for his mercy. And for all of you who are joining us on the web, we pray that the mercy and the grace and the presence of God will be as real in your home, in your car, in your job, as he is here right now with us in this sanctuary. I will read in your hearing, Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eye shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under thy feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show my salvation. Praise your name, Lord. We worship your name, Father. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah, we worship you. Hallelujah, we honor the presence of the Lord, for he is worthy. He is great and he's greatly to be praised. We magnify you. It's such a 
such a privilege to be in your presence. And we worship you. And we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We honor your presence, Father. Great is your name. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Right where you are in your home, I want you to join in with us because his name will be lifted today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on, team. Here we go. Set. We love you. Call your name. Call your name. It's something we cannot explain. We cannot explain. Everything that happens when we
you would reveal yourself to us.
presence, Father, we come with our hearts open and our spirits receptive. Thy precious bleeding side. To thy 
become the sanctuary where God desires to come in and sup with you where the Holy Spirit comes today to minister to the needs of your spirit soul and body they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth we are here today because the blood has covered us because God has kept us from danger seen and unseen it's an old hymn of the church but it yet possesses healing saving cleansing and delivering power I want you to close your eyes wherever you are. Silence all of the distractions. Draw your heart and your mind in. And let the blood just wash over you. David said it this way. Create within me a clean heart, O God. And renew within me a right spirit. If you want the Lord to just cleanse your mind and to cleanse your thoughts and to sanctify your spirit, you'll find him in this blood song. We're sending the word of healing of the spirit and the soul and the mind. To our beloved Deacon Ike Fleshman on this morning in the loss of his brother Deacon Maynard Fleshman. Deacon, may the Lord strengthen you today. May the Lord encourage your heart and your soul. Bless your family. Evangelist Tanya Baines, we're sending our prayers to you and Pastor Debbie Godwin in the loss of your sister. God's grace is sufficient for you. May I say to you, to the Godwin family, he promised not to put more on you than you could bear. I don't know the totality of the assignment that God has given to the Godwin family, but I know it must be great a ministry of comfort, a ministry of encouragement, and a ministry of strength. And it all comes through the power of the blood of Jesus. Let's lift it up one more time. Oh, the blood, blood of Jesus. Everybody say, oh, the blood.
as we're worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth on today, I want to send my love and greetings to the Calvary and Christ Church families. And saints, I want to encourage your hearts and let you know, in spite of all that is going on in our nation and in the world, I want you to know that God is still in control. He sits on the throne and he rules and super rules in the kingdom of men. Make no mistake about it. The earth is the Lord's. Fullness thereof the world and all of us that dwell therein. So this Lord's Day, we're just grateful to be able to come to you again with this live Sunday morning worship experience from Calvary Ministries International here in the city of God in Youngstown, Ohio. I want to thank all of the Calvary family and all of our friends and viewers who come to worship with us every Sunday morning and who have so faithfully and diligently supported this ministry in tithes and offerings as we have done before the pandemic, as we are doing through the pandemic, and as we shall do after the pandemic. I'm asking God to bring an end to this thing, to bring an end to this plague, to have mercy upon us, according to his loving kindness and his tender mercies. These webcast worshipers who are here in the sanctuary, you may have your seats. I want to welcome all of our viewers to join us in continuing to support the work of the Lord in tithes and offering as you have done and are continuing to do. To the Calvary family, you have done such a superlative job in continuing to ensure the forward progress of the ministry, making sure that the church has been able to meet all of its obligations on time. And we are believing by faith that this is the year that God is going to empower us to resolve all of our debt. And I'm believing that not only for the church, but I am declaring that for every home, for every family, and for every child of God. For the word instructs us that it is God's will that we be the lender and not the borrower. So today we are excited and grateful to once again worship the Lord in tithes and in offering. We desire to place God first in our finances by rendering unto the Lord the first 10% of our income and our increase. We do that every time God blesses us to receive and God sows into us we return that seed back to the fertile field of the kingdom of God for kingdom building and to meet the needs of people in our community around the nation and around the world. So I want to speak the blessing of the Lord upon all tithers on this morning and declare the blessings of the Lord make you rich and add to you no sorrow. And it is so in Jesus name. I'm going to ask everyone that is able today to join me in sharing a $25 free will offering to the kingdom of God, not just the Calvary family, but the Christ Church members. I want you to send that $25 to Christ Church on this morning, Calvary sending it here to the home church. And those of you that are being blessed through this worship and this word, would you consider this morning sharing a seed offering with this ministry it shall be a blessing to you and a blessing unto us I'd like for you to verbalize and speak into the atmosphere these declarations over our giving let the praise team and the saints in the sanctuary help me today and repeat after me and say as we receive today's tithes and offering we are believing the Lord for Jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, 
estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and return, checks in the mail. Thank you. Gifts and good surprises. Finding money. Debts paid off. Expenses decrease. Income increase. And it is so in the name of the Lord Jesus. Here, there, and everywhere. Give God a great praise. In the comment section, I want every one of you to type, I am blessed to be a blessing. All 500 of you. Type it in that comment section. I am blessed. You don't look like y'all believe that. I am blessed. I am blessed. I'm blessed when I rise up. I'm blessed when I sit down. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. The fruit of my body is blessed. My children are blessed. My grandchildren are blessed. My future children are blessed. My Shanda. I am blessed. I said I am blessed. Hallelujah. You ought to be a witness. I am blessed. And I cannot be hurt. I feel an irreversible blessing coming your way today. I hear the word irreversible in the atmosphere. Once God releases it, the adversary cannot block it. I am the recipient of an irreversible blessing. My word has gone from my mouth. It shall not. Hallelujah. Return unto me, boy. I need somebody to go. Get Minister Evelyn Hart and bring her in here. I, I, I need somebody to get Minister Evelyn and bring her in here. Can I tell you something? This is for everyone that is watching, that is waiting on a healing touch from the Lord. I'm in that number. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Even while you're waiting, I want you to know that God is giving you strength. To do what it is that you are doing. Now you may not have yet received your full deliverance. But I want you to know that God is preserving you. Let Sister Evelyn get a mic. Come up here. Let her come up here. I want to make sure that you get her on the screen. Praise God's most high name. I just sense that there are some people watching this morning that are believing God for a supernatural touch in their body. I'm in that number. And this is the year of supernatural success. I need everybody here and everybody watching just to say, say it out of your mouth. It's supernatural. Yes, that which God is about to do is supernatural. And I want those that are watching Minister Evelyn to know uh, that God is still in the healing business. You see, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Minister Evelyn, would you just testify just a little bit? Glory to God. Glory to God. On December the 3rd, yeah. glory to God, I went for a regular checkup. And to get a mammogram. Oh, saba. And then on the uh, 17th, I got a call at 12.03 saying they found one centimeter mass on my breast. Mm. And I was getting ready 
to support my sister on the noonday prayer. Plus, I was trying to load my car up for the um, food giveaway. Glory to God. All this is going through my mind. I said, okay, God, what are you doing? And once you make a commitment and you say, Lord, I want to know you. There's things you're going to have to go through and you don't know what it's going to be. But I bless his holy name. I text first lady and I ask her to please tell pastor. I couldn't tell my sisters. I couldn't tell my kids. I had just, my sisters had just lost their daughters. I said, Lord, we're going into Christmas. I don't want to just throw this at them. So I said, God, you are a keeper of your word. You are a promise keeper. And the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. So Bishop, on the Sunday, I believe it was the 20th, I can't remember. I had left out of the sanctuary, though, to minister to my sister because she was struggling. But I came back in, and Pastor said, it didn't matter who she was, but she, he said, what they thought they seen. When you go back to the doctor, it's not going to be there. So I had to wait until the 14th of January. I said, what is this? God will teach you patience. I had to, Pastor, I recorded that section that you told, you gave the prophetic word. I had to go to bed listening to that word. I had to wake up in the morning listening to that word. I had to wrap myself up in the Holy Ghost because it kept my mind. Because the mind will pray tricks on you. I began to examine myself again. And it seemed like I felt all kind of lumps and things. But God, on the 18th, on Thursday, I went to the doctor. They did another ultrasound in a 3D. I shed it in my sight. I had to sit in the other room and wait till he looked at it. Then they called me in. Oh, God, I thank you. Oh, God. He said, I can't find a thing. I said, I told the doctor again in a little Sunday in a little Oh, God. I told the doctor, this is the result of prayer. And I said, thank you, Jesus. And the doctor said, that's right. You bless him. Because he is a God. I thank him. Headed of the Messiah. Oh, God. God will teach you to take his word. And the scripture that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not into your understanding. Because he will direct your breath. I thank him because he's a good God. I thank him because the blood cleanses, the blood heals in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Send up a praise in this church and in your house. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, Lord.
in the comment section. He's done great things. Well, I'm glad. That's why I say God is great. Loose your hole here. I say God is great. Get your hand off God's people. God is great. Release that man's mind. God is great. I break the power of the spirit of depression in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord of the harvest. He is great. He must be praised. He shall be praised. He's worthy. He's worthy. I need somebody to agree with me. He is worthy. He are the Basanda. Wonderful Jesus. Bless God's holy name. I feel a praise in here. I do. I feel a breakthrough. Adama Seke Araba Hoshandi Araba. Thank you, praise me. Bless God's holy name. He's a wonder right now. Lord, I love you. Watch out there. You got to move on. You got to move on. <laughs> well, look like somebody have the praise and they want to get it out.
Your attention to the word of the Lord in the 23rd chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew. Thank you, praise team. Matthew 23 and verse number 13. Matthew 23 and verse number 13. Just a few moments from the word before Pastor David Thompson comes to extend the invitation to those of you who desire to be saved today, to be healed and delivered. These words from the Lord in Matthew 23, we're standing if we're able. Matthew 23 and verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Let everyone in the house shout hypocrites. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. That's a terrible indictment. Jesus said, not only do you not want to be saved, now you're going to try to stop other folk that want to be saved. Somebody say, Lord, don't let me be in that number. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Let the church shout, hypocrites. For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. I am convinced that there are some people that are more interested in people hearing them pray than God hearing them pray. I'm totally convinced of it. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, verse 15, scribes and Pharisees, let the church shout, hypocrites! For ye come past sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. Jesus knew how to straighten you up, didn't he? He said, you are double hell yon. That's what Jesus said. Drop down to verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Let the church shout, hypocrites. For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. The weightier matters of the law. Judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to ask you to prepare your atmosphere at home for the reception of the word of the Lord on this morning with no distractions as I minister today from the subject confronting the hypocrisy of American Christianity confronting the hypocrisy of American Christianity father help us in this hour May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. Confronting the hypocrisy of American Christianity. The dire catastrophe of domestic struggle that is looming over our nation today 
commands the ardent attention of every American. It calls forth the anxious speculations of the entire world. There are some difficulties in the American experience where if a citizen has enough financial means, if that individual has the right connections in the hierarchy of social, judicial, political, and economic spheres of influence, those privileged individuals can often, to some degree, circumvent the many agonies and injustices experienced by the common man. However, at this precarious moment in American history, all Americans regardless of race, creed, gender, social status, or economic affluence, from Wall Street to Market Street, from Tinseltown to Youngstown, from Connecticut to California, from Michigan to Minnesota, and Mississippi, from the elite to the eliminated, indignation, and have vowed wherever the American flag waves to defend their privileges or die. Under these critical circumstances, Christians which make up some 65% of the adult population of the United States are gathering this morning to worship with the urgent responsibility to consider our most perilous condition from the perspective of biblical truth and spiritual revelation. This morning, I pray that ministers of integrity in every denomination and reformation across this nation are lifting this all-encompassing crisis up out of the secular vortex of political interests and partisan prejudices into the revealing light of God's infallible word to which our collective adherence will serve as the only hope to save a nation in jeopardy. As 25,000 National Guardsmen have descended upon the nation's capital to prayerfully provide protection to the dignitaries assembling for the inauguration of the 46th President of the United States, Joe Biden, and while thousands of others are being deployed to state capitol buildings in all 50 states, I hear the voice of God thundering out of heaven today, declaring to all with an ear to hear, except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman waketh but in vain. All this week, we have been inundated with the opinions and the prognostications of journalists, of politicians, and political pundits. 
as I listen to them pontificate back and forth, and as I listen to such polar opposite interpretations of the surreal events that occurred during the insurrection in the nation's Capitol building on January 6, and they discuss why it happened, who was behind it, who is to blame, who is a patriot versus who is a traitor. When I was listening to this dialogue, the word of the Lord from Romans chapter 1 arose in my spirit because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts was darkened. Professing themselves, verse 22, to be wise, they became fools. Verse 28 says, and even as they did not like, to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not expedient. Then the apostle said, because of the failure to retain a God consciousness, they became filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and conspiracies. We have heard all week long what people have to say about what is happening in America but this morning, we need to hear what God is saying about the matter. To arise in any pulpit in the United States today and preach as though we are in a state of business as usual is an unforgivable abdication of the responsibility of the prophets of God to cry aloud to spare not, to lift up your voice like a trumpet, to show God's people our transgression and the house of Jacob our sins. Preachers of the gospel of the kingdom must refuse to abandon such momentous moments to the worldly instincts and political policies of carnal men. I claim these concerns with which we are grappling as a nation as lying within the jurisdiction of that moral order which expresses the divine will of whose requirements and sovereign authority lies within the peripheum of the authority of God's prophet, God's anointed expositor. For the word of the Lord declared in the 10th chapter of the book of Romans, how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall he preach except he be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. It is verse number 16 of Romans 10 with which I am primarily concerned, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Esaias saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? But they have not all obeyed the gospel. 
I'm going to prepare to go to my seat this morning by saying something that I pray shakes the church in America to our core. I recognize that America as a nation has an inherent history with racism, with sexism, with discrimination and bigotry. I acknowledge that institutionalized disparities, inequalities, inequities still play a major factor in the struggle for liberty and justice for all. But this morning, I want to announce to the Church of the Living God in America the gravest danger to the preservation of this union is not the Proud Boys. It is not the Ku Klux Klan. It is not Black Lives Matter. It is not Antifa. It is not QAnon. The greatest threat to the preservation of the Union is hypocritical Christians. The word of the Lord declared in 1 Samuel chapter 15, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Disobedience will result in our destruction. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of ram, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. The Holy Spirit is saying to the church on the eve of the inauguration, I told you, let there be no divisions among you, yet you are still the most divided institution in America. I told you how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Yet 11 a.m. on Sunday morning is still the most segregated hour in America. I declared unto you there is unity where there is strength, where there is unity. But you said we prefer diversity. I commanded you to submit yourselves one to another. And you said, if I'm not in charge, I will not be involved. I commanded you when you enter into a room to go to the lowest seat and wait to be called up. And you said, they're not going to overlook me. And you went straight to the highest seat and refused to come down. Romans 10 and 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. In Isaiah 58 and verse number 2, the word of the Lord said, Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. America, like Israel, in Isaiah chapter 58, likes to think of itself as a God-fearing nation. 
you will hear many Christians decrying the secular humanistic movement in America as un-American. They will insist that America is a Christian country. But I want to submit to the church in America, which is, saith the Lord, as responsible for the spirit of division in this nation as any other American institution, that to call yourself a Christian and to be Christ-like are two entirely different conditions. By the American standard of Christianity, you can be a Christian and still be a racist. By the American standard of Christianity, you can be a Christian and still be a bigot. You can be a Christian and still be a sexist. You can be a Christian and still be a, a white supremacist. You can be a Christian and still be a liar. You can be a Christian and neglect the poor. You can be a Christian and still be xenophobic. You can be a Christian and still be a, a respecter of persons. But when you are Christ-like, according to the biblical standard of Christianity, you love your enemies, you bless them that curse you, you do good to them that hate you, you pray for them that despitefully use you, you prefer your brother, you respect your sister, you honor your father and mother, you judge righteously. When you are Christ-like, you walk circumspectly, you protect strangers, you welcome foreigners, you feed the hungry, you house the homeless. When you are Christ-like, you respect the disrespected, you protect the unprotected, you plead the cause of the poor and needy, you put children through college and not in cages. You build bridges and not walls. You fight for liberty and justice for all. You are inclusive and not exclusive. When you are Christ-like, you do not abuse power. You do not abuse privilege. You love your neighbor as yourself. Thus say the word of the Lord unto the American church. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. What kind of Christian are you? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What kind of Christian are you? Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all the manner of evil falsely against you for my name's sake. What kind of Christian are you? 
Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is good thenceforth for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. I place the responsibility of the preservation of the nation not upon the Republicans, not upon the Democrats, not upon the Senate, not upon the Congress, not upon, praise God, the White House, not upon the name of those who stand in the halls of political power and authority, but the responsibility of the preservation is upon the church of the living God. Ye are the light of the world. Ye are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. If somebody doesn't turn their face to the wall, if someone doesn't turn the battle to the gate, if someone does not stand in the gap between the judgment of God and the damnation of a rebellious nation, if someone doesn't lift up holy hand without wrath or doubting, if someone does not lie and plead upon the mercy of God for forgiveness, if someone does not turn their plate upside down and make a passionate appeal to God for mercy, this nation will go up in flames. But I have a word from the Lord. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. I call for the church to become one. I call for the church to bridge the divide between races and ethnicities. I call for the church to silence the false prognosticators that are bringing about division in the body of Christ. I summons the real believers to stand up and be counted in this hour. I rebuke the spirit of fear, anarchy, and division. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Praise the name of the most high God. Praise the name of the exalted king. Praise the name of the savior of the world. Praise the name that brings deliverance, salvation, and life. Praise the name that rebukes the devourer. Praise the name that rebukes devastation and damnation. Last call from heaven. Let the church be the church. Let the church be the church. Let the church be the church. Give God praise and glory to Never has the nation since the Civil War faced a moment in which we are standing at this hour. And God is laying the responsibility 
for the healing of the nation. Squarely at the feet of the church of the living God. To say nothing is consent to the anarchy which is attempting to wrest control of a civil society. To be silent is to be complicit with those who are operating under the auspices of a demonic power. God is not the author of confusion. But he is the author of peace. Where? In all the churches. Praise team may come to worship the Lord. But I am calling upon baptized believers everywhere to stand up and to be counted among those who are praying for justice to flow in this nation like a mighty stream. I want to implore you this week to distance your spirit and your mind from all distractions. It's praying time like never before. If God does not intervene, hear me now. If God does not intervene, by this time next Sunday, the United States will be under martial law. If God does not intervene because grace and mercy has prevailed over us for so long I fear that there is a perception in our country that we can persist in our willful disobedience against the word of God but I caution you this morning as the servant of the Lord, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Pastor Thompson, we have sown to the wind. Now, less mercy prevail we will reap the whirlwind. But if I could find 200 worshipers, Abraham went to God and said, if they're 50, will you spare the city? God said, if they're 50, I hold back he said, but Lord, what if there's 40? Would you, would you stay in your hand? God said, I'll hold it for 40. I'll hold it for 30, for 20. Son, I will even spare the city if there are but 10. I believe there are 10, F sharp. I believe there are 10 that will cry out to God right now have mercy upon us. John, Jesus Christ is the way. I believe there's at least a hundred that are watching on the web that will cry out in the comment section, Lord, have mercy upon us. I believe there's somebody watching that God is in relationship with. That 
that can fall on their face in their living room. And heaven will look upon your plea and say, Lord, have mercy upon us. And I will open up. My heart, my heart, you must be willing to let God come in to everyone. To everyone. Some are saying we don't know what to do. We don't know which way to turn. We're lost in this nation. Jesus Christ. I don't want you to leave. Pastor Thompson is coming to pray for you. To invite those of you who don't know the Lord. To make a decision. You need to choose today whose side you are on. And as the man of God comes, I don't want you to leave. Some of you need prayer. Some of you need salvation. Others need deliverance. But whatever it is that you need, God has it. And God is in. I want you to stay right there as Pastor Thompson is coming. And say, all that we do is so that the men and women of God can receive instruction, direction, correction as needed, hope, and guidance. And all that we do is that for those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, so that we can give them an opportunity to come into the household of faith. The Word of God says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt believe with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and confess with thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Why do you need to be saved? Because without salvation, there is no forgiveness of sins. Without the forgiveness of sins, there is no way you can make it into heaven. Without the completed work of salvation, you will not have the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. And that is a power that is necessary to take your spirit from earth to glory when you breathe your last breath here on earth. Being saved is as simple as believing and confessing. It's not a hard thing. If you ask, God will hear and God will answer. For those of you who have access to phones, you can call the church. There is a number scrolling across the screen and there are men and women of God who are here ready to pray with you, to lead you into the way of salvation and to pray for the needs that you have in your life. And for those of you who do not have that means, I'll ask that men and women everywhere will bow their heads and close their eyes. We want to pray with you. We want to pray that God will come into your heart, that he'll forgive your sins, that he'll set you free, that he'll write your name in the Lamb's book of life. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray that you will save every man, woman, boy, girl, and child under the sound of our voice that does not know you as their Lord and Savior. I pray, Father God, that you will come into their life and make a change. I pray that, Father, you will lead and guide them to a church where they can receive guidance and instruction to come into the fullness of the salvation that you have for men and women in these last days. I pray for the church that we will take our place, that we will heed the word of God that we have received this morning, 
And Father God, get in our place that you will have mercy upon our nation. Not only upon our nation, but upon this world. Father, for we are the light of the world. And if we do not shine, there is no hope. Now, Father, by your mercy and your grace, meet every need. Heal those that need to be healed. Deliver those that need to be delivered. Give direction to those that need direction. And I pray that every man, woman, boy, girl, and child that has asked you to come into their hearts this day, that you will fill them, Father God, with your spirit. And Father, we the church, together, will go forward to usher in the kingdom of God at its appointed time. Don't forget to call the church. There are men and women waiting to receive your call. May God bless you. May God be with you throughout this week. We give God all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen.